Here's a thought. Just because things don't go according to your plans doesn't mean they're not going according to his. He knows what's around every corner, and he has equipped you to handle it before you even saw it coming. What he calls you to, he will equip you to do and do well with his help. Welcome to the Intertwined Life Podcast. I am your host, Jenny Zentz. I am a wife and a mom on a mission. I've got a passion to help women discover practical ways to apply the power of God's word to our everyday stuff. I truly believe that our walks with the Lord should be seamlessly intertwined with our everyday lives. It should affect every move we make and every breath we take. So come on, let's do life together. You've got this, cause he's got you. Okay, welcome to episode six of the Intertwined Life podcast. Today, I hope that you are all well and safe and fully stocked on toilet paper. (laughs) Who would have ever thought that we would spend so much time checking on the toilet paper status of all of our friends and loved ones, but this is where we find ourselves. This episode is timely and timeless. If you are listening in real time to this episode, we are in the midst of the corona crisis, the quarantine craziness, or the great toilet paper famine of 2020, however it will be referred to. But if you're listening long after all of this has passed, you'll find plenty here to help fill your arsenal, as I like to say, as well, meaning lots of good stuff to load up on to sink deep into your spirit so that when you do face tough or uncertain times, there's a lot of great stuff that can come out. So here we go. This is for all of us in positions that we would never have asked for. For teachers suddenly learning new technology and leading virtual classrooms, Parents becoming unintentional homeschool mamas. (laughs) Singles spending much more time alone and isolated than they'd ever choose. The healthcare workers out there spending long hours in uncertain environments and exposing themselves to so many unknowns. To our leaders, our politicians, all of those in, in government and positions of authority making decisions in a situation that is completely unprecedented and there is no standard to go by. Maybe those listening in not so great home environments where things are are tense and uncomfortable and the quarantine leaves you with little other option for reprieve. The fact is nothing happens that surprises God. In fact, nothing happens that he didn't know about before time began. The scripture tells us that each day of our lives was planned before even one of them came to be. I know this is a crazy time we're in, but we May or we must never forget who is ultimately in total control. Not only is he in control, but he promises he will use even this for good. I challenge you to be on the lookout for the ways that he's already doing that. Absolutely nothing is wasted. Nothing can happen that he can't and won't use for good if we will just lay it at his feet. I know that comes from Romans 8, 28, and so many of us have known that verse and quoted that verse and memorized that verse for so long that it has become a cop-out and it has lost its power in some way in some of our lives. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Sometimes we forget to step back and realize the power of the promise that is there. All things. He's telling us that no matter the craziness, no matter the struggle, he can and will bring good out of it. I'm not telling you that he causes these bad things to happen. Sometimes he allows bad things to happen. But no matter what the situation, I promise there is something in some way that he will use it for good if we will just lay it at his feet. I've seen it time and time again. We've seen it time and time again. The stories that are already coming out of people, of communities coming together, of families coming together, of relationships being addressed, many, many things over and over and over again, where the Lord is bringing good out of a mess, because that's what he does, and that's what he promises us that he will do. So be on the lookout for those ways. I know that personally, As we have been slowing down because we have no choice, (laughs) I'm more grateful for than ever for where we live. Now, I have to say, 
sometimes I feel guilty for sharing what it's like to be quarantined at the beach. So I'm sorry. I know that my, our situation is not exactly the norm. Um, but, you know, to be thankful for my home, to be thankful for what we have, to be thankful for our country that we live in, for um, the supplies that, though short, um, they're not really short. They may be short on our shelves, but my understanding is they're out there and they're being produced and there's no real shortage. There's just this fear in us that is causing us to rush and grab more than needed at the moment. Let's just all get what we need for the day. Think about the Hebrew children. Think about um, episode four I did about collecting manna. Let's get what we need to get through the moment and then go back when we need more, right? Stop trying to glean everything off the shelves and leaving others without um, for so long, but then also offering out of what we have, giving out of what we have and sharing what we have. Um, there's another way that people are coming together. And excuse me, I know that <laughs> I'm connecting more with my kids and I want to do a shout out for the new homeschool moms the unintentional homeschool moms, I am with you. This is actually the second time that God has forced me to homeschool against my will. <laughs> I think homeschool is awesome. I really do. And I see so much value in it. And I believe we're all called to do different things for different children at different times in our lives. And sometimes we homeschool for a season. Sometimes we homeschool one kid and not the other. Some people do a hybrid school, which is amazing, where it's a little bit of both. Um, and then some of us are just sending those missionaries into the public school system. We all have different, different things that is right um, for the walk that the Lord has planned for us. So stay in your lane, right? And just pray and let the Lord speak over you and settle in your heart those questions about schooling your kids. But when we first moved to Florida, it was Michaela's first year of kindergarten and we had her registered for the school, but the school started there um, in Northern Virginia, outside DC in September. And we were selling our house and moving in October. And we weren't actually going to be settled in our new house until sometime in December because we were renovating it. And we spent two months kind of displaced between grandparents um, in different states. And just the whole thing was crazy. There was no way I could put her in school, take her out of school, her not be in a school for months, and then put her in another school. It was too much um, in the midst of all the other changes. So the Lord was like, huh, you have no choice. So I did homeschool her for kindergarten, um, which ended up being wonderful. It, the girl can read, and that was my biggest prayer, just let her be able to read. <laughs> I'm not um, a teacher of young children, so that is why teaching has always kind of made me twitch. Teaching to adults, speaking to adults, teaching the Bible, you got it. That's my sweet spot. But trying to teach children, Oh my goodness. God bless you, teachers. You are called to that. Um, I volunteer in the classroom and after about 20 minutes, I'm literally like twitching. It's just not, it's not, um, it's not what I'm called to. But you know what? There are seasons. There are seasons for all of us when God calls us to something that we feel completely, completely unequipped for. And we are so out of our element. But what he calls you to, he will equip you to do. I want you to take that in. Whoever you are, whatever your situation, what he calls you to, he will equip you to do. Okay? You may not have been able to do it well six months ago. And you may feel like you're not doing it well right now. But that's why we lean in to him. Press into him. Draw your strength from him. And we're actually going to be stronger in the long run. Because if we could just do it all on our own and feel like we didn't need to rely on him, we wouldn't really grow right? But it's in these situations where we're like, oh my gosh, Jesus, help me. And he's like, oh good, I'm glad you asked. James 4, 8, draw near to him, he draws near to you. This can be a great time of growing in your faith, whatever your situation, if you would just press into your source. So this time around, um, with homeschooling now, we, we don't actually receive the official homeschool curriculum from our school until this coming Monday. But this week, I have just started it anyway. <laughs> Are my children lucky? I really wanted to get us into a little bit of a structure, a little bit of a routine. I knew that I needed to start figuring out how to make all this work. So we've been easing into it and making our mornings that way. But I've, I've been enjoying just the reminders of seeing my kids and realizing how much and how fast they're growing. It's given me a chance to have slower mornings and more intentional times of connection. I have the chance to actually have their ear during those peak morning learning hours. 
And I'm taking the opportunity to introduce them to people, virtually, of course, and stories and scriptures that can help shape and mold their lives. And I have time to really teach them how to properly clean bathrooms and floors and windows because we're all a team here, right? <laughs> um, and that reminds me, while your kids are home, mama, don't feel like you got to do it all because you've got more to do than ever before. And honestly, unless your kid can't even walk, there's still things you can start teaching them to do. And sometimes, yes, when we start teaching our kids to do things, it makes more work for us in the long run. But you know what? Push through that and know that your kids can actually do more than you give them credit for. Um, I tell people, I actually have not done my children's laundry. Let's see. Right now they are, Holden will be eight next month and Michaela is 10 and a half. I have not done any of their laundry in three years. Anybody's. My kids run out of underwear. It is not my problem. And it is not because I'm such an awesome mom. It's because I realized that my kids were perfectly capable of carrying their laundry into the laundry room, pushing a button, taking them out, putting them in the other machine, pushing another button. I showed them how, and they take them to the room and they fold them and they put them away. And it doesn't always look exactly folded the way that this type A mom would want, but they get it done. And they learn and they have accomplishments and they're growing. And there are so many things that our kids can do that we don't really even sometimes think that they can do. So I challenge you, find those things, teach them these new great life skills, and then just have that discussion. Tim and I set the kids down, had a discussion. We are a team. We're going to get through this however long it lasts, and we're going to get through it together. We're all going to pitch in. We're all in this. And not just the physical chores, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, giving each other grace, being there for each other, and loving on each other, and being patient with each other. And just being kind and, and, and all of that, realizing that we're all kind of in a, a tense and awkward and uncertain time to acknowledge that we're a team here and we're working together. Uh, one thing I did want to share with you is, so I'll just give you a little quick practical tip. Our homeschool mornings, that way I have set it up, is our beginning routine is the kids get up, they get ready, they get their breakfast. They actually, we have Right Now Media. If you do not know what Right Now Media is, I will link to that as well. Most, well, I shouldn't say most, but many churches actually offer a free link to Right Now Media so that you can have your own account in your home. A lot of churches do that, but I'm sure you can get your own account as well. It is a huge, it's kind of like Christian YouTube. It is a huge, huge platform full of Bible studies and lectures and topics on everything you can imagine. And there's a huge resource for adults, but then there's even a link you click that says kids. And there is, I think I already said the word plethora, but I don't know. That's the best word. There is a huge, huge, huge amount of shows geared towards kids. Off, most of them are cartoons. They all have biblical messages, teaching them scripture, teaching them Bible verses, teaching them lessons from the word of God. And you can literally just say, here, go on here and enjoy it. And so I will tell you that one thing that I have done with Holden for years because he, Michaela will wake up and she's an introvert. She'll just stay in her room and I won't see her until she has to. But Holden would be getting up at the same time I would. I always get up between 5 and 5.30 to have my coffee and my Bible before other things are going on because otherwise it just won't happen. And Holden would be coming in there 5.30. I'm like, no, we cannot do this. <laughs> we can't do this. I'm not getting up at 4. So I actually showed him on his, he has a, an iPad that he gets to use sometimes. And I'm saying, okay, here's the link or an app for right now media. If you get up and it is not yet six o'clock and you, then you can go on your iPad and you can watch right now media, only right now media, but you can do that. And so now that homeschool, and that's like his God time, right? And he's learning so much through it. So now that homeschool is happening, one of the things the kids are required to do before they come to the school table in the morning, which I want them there between 9 and 9.30, we're going to get started. So it kind of gives us a chance to ease in. But one thing they do is they have to either watch one Right Now Media show that they've never seen before or read in their Bible or read in a devotional book. And then they share that with me over breakfast or as we get school started, what they read or learned that morning. And then also the first thing they do, I have it laid out. I'll even, um, I've got a picture. I'm sure I'll put that on Facebook soon. But on the kitchen table, they have each have their own journal, and there is a note card where I found a verse for each of them that just kind of is something that maybe they specifically are needing or dealing with right now that can be a tool for their toolbox. 
and they come to the table, they get their journal, they write three things they're thankful for, and then they write the verse that they are memorizing right now. And that is how we start our day. And that is their, they know, they get their breakfast, they get ready, they've done their God time, they come to the table, they write their three things that they're thankful for, and they write their verse. And then we go into whatever I have for the day. And I put little post-it notes in front of them for any chores that they have later going on. So it's, we're just getting into this little rhythm and routine, but it's so cool because we don't always have time for some of the things I really want to introduce my kids to, right? The people, the heroes of our faith, the incredible people making differences right now in our world. And you think you're going to do that. And by the time they've been at school for seven hours and they come home and everybody's exhausted and then you make dinner and then it's bedtime and the day just goes so fast. So I'm enjoying this. I will tell you there are two books I have for my kids right now that I will link to. One is, they're both by Katherine Parks. One is for uh, boys or, and it is called Strong, How God Equipped 11 Ordinary Men with Extraordinary Power and How He Can Do the Same for You. And the one for girls is called Empowered how God shaped 11 women's lives and can shape yours too. These are awesome books. I've started reading the one about men to the kids, just one chapter. Each chapter is another person in the last um, several centuries that you can read about. And it's it's amazing. The kids are learning about new people, George Mueller and uh, Corey Ten Boon and, and more people like that. So this has been a great resource. I'll link to those. So out of the homeschool mom and on to wives, We talked about how we're all discussing in our family about being a team. Think about our husbands. Um, As they walk through this uncertain time, let us not forget all that is on their shoulders as well. Their work may be uncertain. Pressures may increase. The income may decrease. They're called to lead a family through a time that no one has ever walked through before. And oftentimes they are expected to have the answers to so many unknowns. May we remember to be patient and encouraging, gentle and forgiving. Remember that love covers a multitude of sins. It's not about them deserving it. They may be harsh. They may be grumpy. They may be um, insensitive to your extra workload. You know, I don't know. But it's not about them deserving it. It's about our spiritual act of worship, about our obedience to the Lord by loving and caring for our husbands well. And let's stand united and raise our swords of the Spirit. Mamas, stay in the Word. When, t- when the Scripture talks about the armor of God, the only weapon we have is a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. we got to stay in the Word. Satan would love nothing more than for fear and uncertainty to wreak havoc in our hearts and in our homes. Let us put on our armor and stand strong. Hey guys, I want to jump in really quickly and let you know about a contest I'm doing right now. I'm going to do a giveaway of three $20 Amazon gift cards. I need your help. I need you guys to help me spread the word about the Intertwined Life podcast because word of mouth or social media posting and friend texting, that's how these things get found and that's how we do life together, right? So if you would help me share this between now and April 1st, I'm going to enter your name every time you post on the socials about the Intertwined Life podcast and tag me at Jenny Zentz, Facebook or Instagram. Every time you rate or review the podcast on either Apple or Google, take a screenshot and post that on your socials. Tag me there. If you text it to a friend, if you email it to a friend, whatever, you can take a screenshot. You can tag me in that. Every time you do something to help me get the word out about the podcast, you will be entered in this drawing. And then on April 1st, three lucky people will receive a $20 Amazon gift card as my thank you so much for helping me get the word out about the Intertwine Life podcast. Let's get out there and help other women discover practical ways to apply the power of God's word to their everyday stuff, especially in these crazy times we're in right now. Let's do this together. And this is one way we can do that. Okay, back to the show. He who works deceit shall not dwell in my house and he who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. That's Psalms 101.7. I shared that in um, the last episode last week. But man, I love that verse. What a powerful verse to speak over our homes and our lives. And it helps if you kind of like do that 
snap thing and attitude head bob thing when you say it. He who works deceit shall not dwell in my house. And he who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. I love that. I love that. Speak that over your homes right now. And singles, you know, you're maybe you're out there and you're stuck home and you're alone and you're like not enjoying this. Let me just challenge you. Your creator wants some one-on-one time, one -on -one time with you. When I was a teenager, for some reason, I was left out of a lot. It just seemed like everybody get together and nobody really thought to include me. You know? And that happened over and over and over again. But God uses everything for good. And it was in all of those evenings and weekends of me just being alone in my room that I just I was singing worship music. I was digging into the word. Um, my Bible, I still have it from that time in my life, is in a million pieces. And I don't say that pridefully. I say it humbly. It actually brings tears to my eyes every time I think about it. Because the Lord just, I drew near to him and he drew near to me. And it was this continual cycle. And the more I spent time in the word, the more I wanted to spend time in the word. And the more that fire got lit inside my bones. My life verse is Jeremiah 20 verse 9. If I say I will make no more mention of the Lord or speak no more in his name, it is like in my spirit. There is a fire shut up in my bones and I am worn out from trying to hold it in. I cannot do it. And that is how I feel. And it was in those years of being alone, but digging into the word that that spirit and that fire and that spunk and that passion really, really began to take root in my life and lead me on the on the path and the direction where the Lord has me now. Um, so I challenge you, if you're single and you're home and you're alone most of the time, dig in to the word. Um, I would challenge you rather than vegging out that you dig in and you will come through this a whole new person. No problem with Netflix. <laughs> no problem with throwing on the TV and enjoying that. But don't forsake the growing time, and the opportunity you have right now. And a word to and about teachers. Teachers, I applaud you. I am standing with you. I am so thankful for you. I'm so proud of you. Not just our own teachers, but teachers all across the country. I'm seeing this incredible rising up, this incredible challenge that you guys are meeting and exceeding expectations. Parents, let's be encouraging. Let's be giving of grace. Let's be gentle and kind. Our teachers did not see this coming. And teachers who have taught in classrooms for 30 years are all of a sudden being asked to be virtual classroom teachers and learning technologies and formats and things that they've never even seen before, some of them. And all of a sudden, here it is, right? Um, teachers, you've got this. You've got this. Our teachers in our school yesterday um, was so precious. They got in a caravan um, of cars and they drove the streets of our community for over an hour. I think it was like 30 cars and they had their windows painted and their streamers and they drove through our town honking their horns and waving out their windows in this big long line and students and children and parents all over our community were standing out on the streets. Um, our kids had homemade signs waving and I actually have a Facebook live video um, on my page at Jenny Zents, if you check it out on Facebook, where I just spoke prayers over them and encouraging words over them as they drove by. And it just brings tears. It was so awesome. But that would not have happened otherwise, right? And we're seeing, like I said, community coming together and things happening and, and excitement and support and encouragement. It is so cool to see. Um, I want to share with you about a very special teacher. There are a lot of very, very special teachers close to my heart. And many of them my children have had that have been powerful and amazing and encouraging. The ones that they have right now are just rock stars. But I also want to share with you one of my favorite teachers in the public school system right now is my sister. Um, Susie is a second grade teacher in Kentucky. And she is one of those teachers where you know, we all had those teachers that you look back on and they were they were the one. They were the one that inspired us. They were the one that encouraged us. They were the one that let us know that we could 
We could do that. We could succeed. We could be that. We could reach for that. We could learn. We could grow. And my sister is that teacher. I cannot even imagine how many countless lives she is changing. And I'm so, so proud of her. And she's been hilarious um, a lot. I'm, I'm like in tears as I'm, as I'm talking about this. But a lot of teachers have been very scared because this is overwhelming. And um, I know that there have been plenty who are probably really struggling to hold on to a good attitude because this is tense and this is frustrating and this is not happy. And sometimes parents are not patient and not nice. <laughs> so it can be a very difficult job. And goodness knows, we all know they do not get paid enough. Can I get an amen? I'm hoping that when all this is done and so many people have finally realized how much our teachers do, <laughs> that there is... Um, a lot of pay raises going down the pipe for them. They definitely deserve it. So, but my getting back to my sister, she has been excited in the midst of all of this craziness. She's been so excited. She's been going, she's calling me and she's talking 90 to nothing and about all the new stuff she's doing and all the opportunities she has. I've seen some videos she has done for her kids. She's doing shout outs for them every day and giving them challenges, not just like academic challenges, but to go out there and find something you've never done before to help somebody and, you know, all these things. And she's, she's just doing amazing, amazing, amazing. And I wanted to read to you a text that she sent me the other day. Um, and she did tell me that she's seen things, people coming together. She's seen parents notice um, struggles that their children are having in school that they would have never noticed otherwise. She's seen parents get excited about engaging with their kids and being a part of their kids' learning. And, and that may have never happened otherwise. And so she's seen a lot of great things coming out of the family connection through all of this. And this is what she texted me. She said, this has been the most awesome week ever for me as far as teaching goes. This time last week, I knew nothing of the technology and tools that I do now. It's been just an eye-opening and awesome experience. I'm blown away. I was driving home today and I thought 24 hours ago, I'd never even heard of Zoom. And after hours of researching, collaborating, trial and error, we had Zoomed with a screen full of kids. This is all so awesome and the best personal development experience I have had in forever. It's just like immersion, which I have always thought is probably the best way to learn. When you are thrown into something, you have no other way, no other choice. You do, you try, you don't give up, and you learn. And then she goes on to tell me that she, I just realized, I think I've been up all night up so early and working almost nonstop at home because I've gotten excited about teaching and innovating again. And that's that's so awesome to hear. That's so awesome to hear. Um, just goodness, so proud of, of so many people. And I love seeing what's going on here. Whatever your situation, here's a thought. Just because things don't go according to your plans doesn't mean they are not going according to his. He knows what is around every corner. He has equipped you to handle it before you even saw it coming. In Chronicles chapter 20, we see King Jehoshaphat, and he's got the children of Israel, and they're in this heat of this battle. And there's an army coming up on them, and they are small, and they are worn out, and they are fearful, and this massive army is coming in. And he stands in front of the children of Israel, and he prays. And he's, he's talking to the Lord and he says, Lord, we are powerless against this great multitude, which is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but Lord, our eyes are on you. If you can pray nothing else right now, just fall to your knees and say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. And I promise you in that focus will be your victory. Friends, what he calls you to do, he will equip you to do and to do well with his help. We often use Philippians 4.13 out of context. Most of us know Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is a powerful, awesome verse and an incredible promise. But I think it's best said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, all things that he has called me to do, right? Through Christ who gives me strength. And you got this because he's got you. If he has brought you to something, he's going to bring you through it. While the circumstances may be horrendous, the results can be stupendous. Trust him. Just like Joseph, after being sold into slavery and being in prison and all these things, when he finally had a chance to confront his brothers, 
He was confident that what Satan had intended for evil, God used for good. Be confident in that. In the midst of this mess, what Satan intends for evil, what the enemy intends to just wreak havoc and destroy, God will use for good. So instead of letting circumstances and the unexpected throw you off and turn you into an emotional wreck, determine now, whatever comes your way, your plan is to just go with it. Trust that his ways are better than your ways. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, but they are higher. And no matter what may come, be confident in his great love for you, knowing that he will never let go of your hand. Friends, God rarely just takes our trials away, but he always gives us what we need to fight our battles. Hang in there. I'm rooting for you. God's got this. He's got this. And you are going to have what you need to do what you need to do and to do it well. Just trust him. Trust him. And listen, should you find yourself having a full-on mental breakdown crying in the bathroom or in the dark garage or wherever it might be, it's okay. It's okay. You're not going to be totally on top of things all the time. That's not natural. <laughs> If you break down and you lose it, like I have done several times, many, many, many times, um, several times a day <laughs> over the last couple of weeks, you're not alone and it's okay. Remember Ephesians 4.23, be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. That's how the Amplified Classic Version says it. And the fact is, God would not tell us to be constantly renewed in the spirit of our mind if he did not know we'd be, be constantly getting messed up. Okay, it's okay. Go in the other room, have your breakdown, <laughs> but then get renewed and get back up. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. You've got this because God's got you. Hang in there. He's got great plans. Love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Hey, friend, if you enjoyed this episode and you got some good stuff out of it, there's a few options you have. One, you could click that little subscribe button, because let's be honest, who's got time to remember to check back and see if there's a new episode, right? So click that subscribe button, and then when a new episode comes up, it will just, by the magic of the internet, pop up in your Dropbox, and it'll be right there for you whenever you're ready. And also, if you would review this podcast, oh my gosh, if you like what you heard, get on there, give it a five-star review. If you didn't like what you heard, just pretend it never happened, okay? <laughs> but if you would do um, a review for me, just take a couple seconds and do that. Not only would I be crazy excited, but also it would just be a great way for us to partner together for you to help this podcast be seen by more women out there. And you could be a part of helping more women discover these practical ways to apply God's word to just everyday stuff. So I would love it, love it, love it if you could help me out in one of those two ways. Thank you.